If you can have the, the, the talking point that there's been two people to beat Donald Trump, Nikki Haley and Joe Biden, that, that changes the conversation. I know you've, you've seen this, Ken Langone, the Home Depot billionaire, said, hey, I'm going to wait to put in any more money until after he sees what happens here on Tuesday. Big crowd here. There, there's reasons to be optimistic. Is the expectation that you need to win New Hampshire unfair? I mean, yes, because if you listen to what I've said from the very beginning before Iowa, and I've been very consistent, I wanted to be strong in Iowa. I feel like we were. We started at 2 percent. We ended with 20 percent. I'm thrilled with that. I want to be even stronger in New Hampshire. We're doing that. It's a two-person race. I want us to have a strong showing. We're going to be even stronger than that in South Carolina. To me, it's about continuing to build. It's the media that's got their expectations. Those aren't mine. Mine are make this state better than the last state, then make the next state better than this state. That's how you go. It's all about addition and bringing people in. This is a process. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It has been for 11 months that I've yeah. been doing this. No, I, I've heard I've heard that. I get that. But you need you need money to run this. You need money to get on the air for Super Tuesday. How do you convince voters? How do you how do you convince donors that you are still having you still have a chance to beat Donald Trump? when in a state like New Hampshire, you've got the governor, you've got his organization, you've been here for 11 months. If you can't beat him here, how do you convince your donors you can beat, beat him other places? Well, first of all, I will tell you that you're forgetting you're talking to an accountant. So I saved <laughs> a lot of money. Fair we enough. didn't go and spend it. I've got plenty. I've made sure we're already in the coffers for South Carolina and plenty, and plenty of money for that. Every bit of this, I did it smart. You didn't see me wasting millions over the summer because it didn't matter. You saw me make sure that I was heavy on TV when I needed to be in Iowa. Now when I need to be in New Hampshire, you're going to see it in South Carolina and going forward. So donors will watch my strength. They will watch my sustainability. But more than that, donors have complimented me and have seen I am very frugal with how I spend because that's how I spend tax dollars, my dollars, or campaign dollars. And so I'll continue to do that. I'm going into South Carolina. I'm going in strong regardless. And so donors will see that, and I think they'll respond to how well I do. And, and if I may understand, mm -hmm. when there were 12 candidates in the race and whatever it was, sure, you're going to have activists, even some voters and some donors staying on the sidelines saying, gee, I wonder if they'll ever get it to a two-person race. It is. It's Trump Haley. It's one-on-one, -on -one, a two-person race. Time for DeSantis and to drop out. I'll never say anybody needs to drop out, but I mean, he's he's closer to zero than he is to me in New Hampshire or South Carolina. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's sick. It's what is it? You say it best when you Look, say nothing Ron's at a nice all. Nice guy. He's a friend. The whole okay. thing. And uh, you know, his campaign just didn't didn't quite get over the. Wasn't quite able to do it. I mean, let, let's just. He's leave been it, a leave good governor, yeah. but I mean, I think it is what it is. When you have to leapfrog states, it says something. Yeah. You guys talked to Chris Christie lately? Uh, not lately. I talked to him after he got out of the race. Yeah. But not since discussion. Would you want his endorsement? Yeah. No. No. Why not? I don't need it. Mm -hmm. The voters. It's. I mean, it's the, the endorsements I want are the people in this diner. I mean, that's always been the case. I always want. I and you see, I haven't gone after a ton of legislative endorsements and those types of endorsements because at the end of the day, you don't want all of those politicians' endorsements. That's part of the problem. You actually want people who move the ball. I wanted Chris's because I knew he's as close to the people. They love him. He's got a relationship with him. That's Someone was asking if matter. you would be vice president, right? Yeah, not not for me, but but I appreciate that. <laughs> but I think it was the woman right up there, right? I'm here to help Nikki as, as much as I can through the campaign and whatever she needs when she's president. You know, I'll I'll, I'll help her all the way. But uh, yeah. we'll end with this: the idea of independence. How you and I talked in New Hampshire. You and I talked in Iowa about the independent vote there, and there was there was a thought that you were going to get this sort of groundswell of folks who may not love everything Nikki Haley says, but wanted an alternative to Donald Trump. How do you turn those people out here in New Hampshire when you didn't really in a way that you needed to in Iowa? Well, the thought was what the media thought. It was never what I thought. I have always focused on making sure when I have a town hall, I don't check their party status when they walk in the door. When I come into this diner, I don't ask them how they voted before. I want every single voter's support, and I'm working hard to earn it. I've gone after conservative Republicans, moderate com Republicans, independents, and yes, if, if conservative Democrats come our way over time, I want that too. Parties have forgotten what the goal is. 
the goal is, I don't want to just win the Republican Party. I want to grow it. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.